In this video you will learn what is Postman and why I think that this is the best tool to test your API. And actually inside web developers I see two different types of people. First people don't know how to test their API and they just set up some client with JavaScript or maybe inside React application they are simply making requests to the backend. This is not efficient. Other types of people are more advanced developers and they are simply use curl inside console to make requests. This is totally possible, but it is not comfortable. This is why I highly recommend you to look on the Postman, which is the most popular solution to make API requests and test them. And as you can see here, I am inside official website postman.com and here you can see on the top pricing which actually means it is not only a free products. There are paid tiers, but I never used them and you don't need them for everyday use of Postman. Most importantly, this is the tool which is working on any operational system and this is how it looks like. This is a standalone application where we can make some requests. And actually here I opened for you Angular Real World IO and we want to test some requests from here inside Postman. As you can see here, to get a list of our articles, we have such a nice URL, condinproductionradio slash API slash articles. We can simply jump inside Postman and here we can just paste our URL that we want to get. This is not all, on the left we can change the method that we are using, by default it will be get. And actually as you can see here, for me I have an activated tab here body, it doesn't really matter because we are making a get request and this body is completely ignored. So I can simply hit here send and as you can see here on the bottom we are getting our response. So we have our object with articles and here is an array with information. And here we are also getting important statuses, for example, that our request was 200 and it is okay. Another thing that I really like about Postman is history by default, because actually you are just making some requests and at some point you want to make exactly the same request again. And as you can see here on the left I have a history, and here you can see on the top today, and this is exactly the request that we just did. If I am jumping to another link, my request that I made at that second is saved here completely with the body. Now we can jump back to our request and here we are getting get and our correct URL, which actually means it saves something like a snapshot of all data that you use to make a request and this is extremely comfortable. Another typical thing that you will do with Postman is obviously using body. For example, if we are talking about Angular Real World IO, here we have a sign up and here we can provide some data inside the form to register a user. I'm hitting here sign up and this is how our request is looking like. This is API real world IO slash API slash users and this is a post request with this body. And as you can see here, our payload is the user property with email, password and username. So how we can write it inside Postman? First of all here we must paste our post request and change here a method to post and now we must jump inside body. And this is exactly what we will provide here. And it is extremely important to change the type, by default it will be for you none or form data, we don't need that, typically you want to send a JSON. And actually you don't have here a JSON, but we have raw. But what you want to change additionally is here not text, because it is not highlighted, but JSON. And in this case here it will be validated, which actually means I am removing one symbol here and it is invalid, we are getting here red lines and we see our problem. So what we want to provide here is first of all our user and here we know that it was an object, first of all it was our email, for example let's create some email which for sure does not exist, after this we must create a username and let's create some safe password. Now I'm hitting send and we're getting a response which is success because our user was created. So this is exactly how we're making post requests, but it is not all, typically we're getting from the backend after user authorization a token. And this is exactly a good time to talk about headers, because we typically attach a token later to every single request to authorize our request. 
which actually means we want to provide a new header to our request. And for this we are using here a tab which is called headers and inside we can provide different things. For example, as you can see here, I already have a key authorization and accept. I can just remove them. For you, it will be completely empty. First of all, here we can provide a key, for example, authorization. This is what you are typically providing to authorize your request. And here inside value, I will just paste the token that we got from previous request. Additionally, you might want to set your content type to application JSON. And as you can see here inside Postman, we are getting really nice autocomplete, so we can use it much faster. Now, after we provided here a correct authorization header, we can make a locked in request. And actually, in this example, in Angular real world, we have my posts. And this is for sure only for locked in user. This is why I will copy paste this URL and just jump back to Postman and write it here. So this is a GET request and this is a request only for authenticated users. I am hitting here SEND and as you can see we are not getting 401, we are authorized because of this authorization header. And we are not getting any articles because our user didn't create any articles yet. And the last thing that I want to show you inside Postman is extremely versatile. We can use here collections even inside free tier. Here on the top on the left we can jump to collections and as you can see I have several collections. The main idea is that we can save our requests inside collections. For example you are working on some project and I am hitting just here plus and create a new collection for this project. So we have here full project for example and we don't need to provide any anything here. Now here I can click on the full and we can add here requests. But it is not comfortable to add them here. We can simply jump back here on the left to our history and just make some request. For example, this is a get request to get all our users. And here on the top we can click save, but I don't want save, I want save as. And now here we can select our full collection and we just need to change the name. As you can see on the top, this is the request name. This is not what we want. We can write here get articles. I'm hitting here save and after this, every single time when I want to check request of this collection, I am simply jumping to collection and here I am clicking on full. We have a nice name get articles and we know, okay, this is the request inside our project to get a list of the articles. And actually, if you are interested to know what is GVT or how to implement correctly GVT authentication inside Node.js on the server, make sure to check this video also.